It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Bears and the Buccaneers. And it's kicking off next on Madden NFL 24. The Florida humidity is certain to be a factor in this one. There's no other way to say it, really. It is hot. It is humid here at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, the vibe, a different one here in Tampa this year. This is year 1AB after Brady. What can they do to help soften the blow? I would say try and lean on the defense a little bit more. I think they'll play a lot better in 2023. We know how exotic they can be with how they get after the quarterback. Make sure they slow people down running the ball as well. Give this offense a chance to grow because they are under new management. And then for the visiting Bears, they want to wipe the slate clean from 2022. Now, working in their favor, we've seen plenty of teams in the NFL make big turnarounds from year to year. What can the Bears do to you know, just get back to closer to maybe seven, eight wins, Charles? Well, they want to coalesce all this young talent that they're accumulating and guys that they brought in from the outside and start to build a culture, a feeling around this team that they know they can compete week in and week out. Set to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon. And off we go from Tampa. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 in his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. The former number one overall pick has had his ups and downs in recent seasons, but he finished strong last year and inherits a really good offense in Tampa that should set him up for success. Now a third round pick a year ago. Here's Rashad White, and he maneuvers up the middle for three, and it's second down. From the 24 now, here's a second and seven. Going with White here, toss left. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Mayfield looks to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. That's a pretty good opening possession defensively. And you know the goal is to make something of a statement, especially on the road with your first defensive possession, isn't it? Go right out and establish yourselves and let them know this is going to be tough going all game long. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. 40 yards on the punt, two on the return, and the Bears take over. So here come the Bears to take over on offense behind their third-year quarterback, former Ohio State Buckeye Charles, Justin Fields. We all knew Fields was an incredible athlete coming out of college, and last season, he unleashed it upon the NFL. Ran for over 1,100 yards and would have broken the quarterback's single-season record if he had played the full season. He also threw 17 touchdown passes, and that's the next jump for him. More consistency as a passer. And this will be a Bears first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that, and here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game, and all that preparation, it goes right out the window. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Levante David making his presence felt in the backfield. One of the league's best linebackers, he ended that play almost before it began, and the running back absolutely overmatched no matter what he tried to do. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. To throw his fields. 
pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. They'll make that a second sack here on their first drive out defensively, and not to get ahead of ourselves, but they're, they're on pace for double-digit sacks at this point. But they're going to have to find a way to tamp that down, aren't they? So if you're the play caller, you're telling your quarterback, Maybe some screens, maybe some draws, hard count, use your voice inflection a little bit, anything to try and slow that pressure down. So now following the sack, Fields and the Bears looking at third down and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Under pressure, and they got to him again. Vita Vea, that's now back-to-back -back sacks, and it brings up fourth down. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Man, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game, I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what, when he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. Fourth down, so they send out Trenton Gill. Back deep for the Bucks is Devin Tompkins. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And the Buccaneer offense will be set up well as they take over. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt, they're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. On second down, they'll run with White. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instinct, being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield on his horse. And finally wrestled down at the eight-yard line. A big play that time on the catch and run, and it'll result in a fresh set of down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. Quick hitter here, it's complete. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Second and goal from inside the five. White is into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. So a good job there, Charles, taking advantage of the short field, and they score first, punching it in on the short touchdown run. I love the theme there, right? They didn't have to do anything big on that drive. Took advantage of where they were on the field, took it downfield, put the ball in the end zone. The only thing big on that drive, the six on the scoreboard. 
Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. the touchdown here's McLaughlin to kick off taking it at about the one and he won't quite make it to the 25 Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game on first down it's fields this is Chase Claypool on the receiving end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. And now at this point in the first half, you've got to realize as an offense, you're not going to get it all back in one fell swoop. This is going to be about sustained drives and making sure you finish with points. And that's a good throw there for a first down. On first and 10, here's Fields. He's got Tunyon complete over the middle. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. From just across the midfield stripe, here's second down and a yard. Here's Travis Homer, the former Miami Hurricane. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that. The nickel look, five cents, five DBs. But what also happens then? You take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little. And oftentimes, you can run the football effectively against that defense. Now a first down throw, Fields. And this is taken in by Darnell Mooney. And out of bounds right around the 20. Second down and three. when he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive, much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, okay, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. He was looking to get that one to D.J. Moore, and that'll bring up second down. On second down, a run with Herbert. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten. Well, probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Fields on third down. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. Oh, Brandon, that's a gamer move right there. Facing third down, steps up, calls his own number, and nearly makes the house call. If I'm the coach, I let him take another one right here. Give him a chance to be the first one to hit the end zone after that effort he just gave him. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down.
Fields going to hold on to it. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Now we're going to get a stoppage. Appears to be an injured bear on the field. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Third and goal now, mere inches from Pater. Herbert. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. But when the ball snapped from the three down near the goal line, I think in days gone by, we thought many teams would run the football, but on third down in today's game, I expect them to throw it. A little counterintuitive there. They tried to run it, instead spilled for a loss. The offense is staying out there. Here we go on fourth and goal from the one. Oh, they'll run the option right. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Bears' decision to go for it pays off with six points. And sometimes you just put it in the hands of your quarterback, let him take you home. And you just know the NFL playbooks nowadays have gotten just a little bit thicker because just about everyone has a quarterback run series involved now, and we just saw the evidence of it. Do defenses hate that? <laughs> Drives them crazy because the quarterback is usually not a guy that runs with the football. You cover everyone else, and all of a sudden he waltzes in on you. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Second and 10. They defer to White out of the shotgun. They'll rumble for about six up across the 20 to the 22. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Third and four. On the draw, here's White. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 44 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Obviously an important run to avoid the three and out on your own side of the field. Shows a lot of faith in that offensive unit, doesn't it? That you want to run the ball in that situation, pick up the first down. Also helps out your defensive guys a little bit too. Allows them to get at least one more series of downs in order to get some rest. Well, into a sea of defenders have intercepted. Tyreek Stevenson picks it off. And they will finally get him, but not until he's all the way down inside the 15-yard line. Well, these defensive coaches, they sure like what they've got in this rookie corner, and with good reason, as you saw there. He only cost him a day-two pick, and a lot of people thought he had first-round ability. But when he was available on draft night, that was one where you didn't need the full time to make the selection. You call that pick in early, and he shows why he was so coveted with that interception there. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. On first and 10, it's Herbert. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Tackle made that time by Vita Vea. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Fields. His throw incomplete. Darnell Mooney, the 
target there. And now it's third down. Throwing on third down, Fields. That's complete to his running back, Herbert. And he'll be tackled right on the 10, well short of the first down. 7-7, seven, seven, our score after one. The Bears with the football. We get set to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. Santos' kick is up and through, and they take the lead here now at 10-7. So golden field position there is squandered as they can muster only a field goal. Yeah, you were gifted a first-to-goal situation, but I have to give credit to the defense. They were brought out in a really tough situation, so give them credit for holding them to three. That's a pretty nice accomplishment. Following the made field goal, out instead is the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick this away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. From the 25, here's second down and seven. Here's a toss right side with White. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. This is the target incomplete. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Fields on first down. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Here's second and 10. Read option, here's Herbert. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. And this offense on third down today, they've only converted once in four tries. This is third and nine. He's going to look deep for more. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, they came up with points in their first two possessions, but it looks like they'll come up empty here on their third drive. The defense finally starting to get locked into them a little bit. About to go a little bit deeper into their playbook on their next possession. Now here's Trenton Gill on to punt. Catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. 
37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Now Mayfield and the Bucs come up on first and 10 right at the 30. They'll start here with a handoff to White to about the 33-yard line. Well, they always talk about playing great team defense, and that was an excellent example right there. Everyone on assignment, no one in the wrong spot, everyone filling their gaps. Second down and eight. Mayfield. On the left side, a catch by White. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 10 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. 57 yards rushing for him now to this point. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Here now, second and four. On the toss, here's White. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. How about the job there on the outside? Shed the wide receiver and was able to make the tackle on the perimeter. Here's third and seven. To throw, Mayfield. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Jake Camarda sent on now to punt this away. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And it'll be first and 10 Bears from deep in their own territory. But now the Bears coming out as they get ready. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They'll give him four yards there, and that'll make it second down. One play action, Fields. A throw complete to the tight end, Tunyon. And he is gonna lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. They'll see about converting this third and eight. Now it's Fields. it across the 25 before being tackled. Fields, we know he has the good mobility. He flashes it there as he scrambles for the first down. He really looked comfortable there, scanning the situation, analyzing things, feeling the pressure, and then stepping up right through the middle and sprinting for a first down. Herbert powering up the middle, and he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Second down and six now. Now Field's going to keep it running left. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Back 
to throw. Fields. And that is incomplete. So many offense want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. Now here's Trenton Gill now. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 22. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. It's caught by Mike Evans. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. From the 31, here comes second and a yard. Here's Mayfield. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. All right, I think it's high time to get him some passes that he's comfortable with. Some easy throws, some completions. He's not even hitting at 50% thus far. Well, certainly that has played a big role into why they are trailing right now. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Mayfield down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That was simply snap, rock, and fire. I mean, they didn't take long at all. Slant route, and I loved where he put it. He put on the body of the receiver low so that only he can catch it. Yeah, I don't think there was any magical formula there. Defensively, that's just tough to defend. Very much so. And that way, it allows the receiver to keep his body in front of the defender and not allow him to go through him to knock the ball away. A pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's a second and four. Now Mayfield. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 40. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 right at the 40. Mayfield to throw it. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop it for an eight-yard loss. How about that? Well, the so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. They'll go up the middle with White, and they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. The Bucks on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and 17. Mayfield looks to throw. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Here's Jake Camarda now. And he didn't quite have the bag spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at the 20. Mooney, the motion man right. Now Herbert to start the drive. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. 
Coming in to put a lick on it was Levante David. Two minutes remaining in the first half. 10-7, our score. Here's Fields now on second down. They'll set up the screen for Herbert. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. The Bucks with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Here's Fields. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Here comes the Bears punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. First down, Mayfield. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Any questions of how they'd approach this drive were answered right there. They come out throwing, and they get a nice pickup here toward the end of the first half. down here's white and he'll take this ahead for about four second down coming up second and six throwing Mayfield he's gonna float this one deep right side and that's gonna be incomplete Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Absolutely no disguise on that one. They just went for it, put him out there and said, go deep, let's try and hit him. Unfortunately, to no avail. The first down line at the 34 here on third down. Back to throw. And that will be incomplete. Brings up fourth down, solid coverage by the Bears D. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three and he'll need all the leg he's got here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. He's got the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right and instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. Here's Fields. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And that one will go down in the books as just a one-play drive and then three points tacked on to the end of it. Now a second and two. Fields now to throw. That is caught by Herbert. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. First 
But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Throwing on first down, but this one lines up to be incomplete. Now is second and ten. Again, Fields. And his throw is incomplete. Cole Komet, the intended receiver. And it's third down. Fields. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now the Bears are going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. to throw his fields. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Not the first and goal play they drew up. Multiple defenders in to bring him down to the ground. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Santos' kick is up and through, and the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we reach halftime with the visiting Bears out on top here. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, they're standing by as Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Set to resume, here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. And the Bears offense set to go to begin the third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, that they need to change things too much. 
I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Here's second and five now from the 22. Off play action, Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end commit. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. A handoff for Herbert. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Fields on first down. This one complete to Tunyon underneath. So just three yards on the completion there. And it's second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second down and seven. Here's a give to Herbert. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. takes it inside the 40. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Operating from the gun, Fields. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Field's going to keep it running right. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. When a drive goes this long, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, those big fellas, because the offensive line is putting something together that allows them to continue to control the ball. I know a lot of people think they get fatigued on a long drive. Actually, a lot of times the reverse happens. They actually get energized because they're controlling the ball and they're the ones dictating to the defense. is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 19. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. On third and short, not only did he get away from the rush and pick up a first down, he picked up a whole lot more than that. And how did he get it done? Evaded the rush, kept his poise, and then how about him directing traffic as he moved downfield to pick up extra blockers? A really nice run. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. And they'll come up second and seven. And they'll go again with Herbert. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. The running game's played a huge part of getting him down to this point on the field. I say stay with it. Keep pounding the football. Keep driving. Keep grinding. Yeah, even down in the red zone, keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brung you. And they'll try the option on first and goal. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. 
Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Only four yards on that game, but, you know, a lot of people would say that's like getting nine in normal circumstances since this was first and five. Yeah, now your playbook's wide open here, second and very short. Yeah, I still don't think that you can count it in the stats that way at contract time. No, no, it still goes down as four, not okay. nine. <laughs> They'll toss it out right to Herbert. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. That almost felt like the defense said he is not getting in. What a play. Not only stopping him at the line, but pushing him back a yard as well. From back at the two, here's third and goal. Field's going to hold on to it. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. Justin Fields with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Well, Charles, he's already proven that he's not afraid to tuck that football down on the option, and he's into the end zone for the second time in the game. And that's exactly what you need from your quarterback, the ability to run the ball fearlessly. And in fact, many quarterbacks will tell you Running the football doesn't scare them. Standing in the pocket and taking blindside hits, that's what terrifies them. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They make their second half debut here, and things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles, that touchdown drive on the other side, so now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do, and I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because if they don't get some kind of points here, that next drive, that could make this a three-possession game. From the 35, here's second and a yard. They keep it on the ground, right again. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. 82 yards for him on the ground now on 18 carries. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now a give up the middle. This is White. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw, unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. On third down, Mayfield. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot, so you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is, because he understands how to get open in key situations. Now back to the ground game with White. 
Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Here's a second and five. To throw Mayfield. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. From the gun, Mayfield. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Still just a third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on fourth. Mayfield. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Oh, and he's going to take this right to the line to gain. Awfully close. But they'll say that he did get the six yards he needed. Didn't get much more than that, but it works all the same. First down. So the drive will indeed continue. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. That's Yannick Ngakwe with a sack. Give Ngakwe credit on that play and for what he's done throughout his career. He's been on five teams across the last four seasons but has never stopped producing. At least eight sacks every single year, and he's still only 28 years old. On second down, they'll run with White. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef feeders on the interior of this D-line you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops and tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Yeah, you did. That line's not eating. Now the holder's going to keep it. He's going to try to run for it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. Well, clearly that was a design play. I just don't know that it was the right design. Hey, your holder to have him pick it up and kind of be the power guy trying to run through the middle. Everything has to go right for that to work. You mean you weren't relying on just great blocking to get him through? You kind of think maybe he can help make his own way if he's an actual running yeah. back instead of the holder? Yeah, I thought the same thing. Starting on the ground with Herbert. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try to make some plays in their backfield. Fields. And there's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. So the completion good for seven there. And this will wind up being a third and three. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Fields on third down. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Then he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa as we are set to bring you the home stretch here, the fourth quarter. 
And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Throw out right. It's brought in by Otten. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Well, so often now we're praising tight ends for their nimbleness and how they catch the ball downfield. But occasionally we get a reminder that tight ends, they've got that tough guy aspect too. How about him catching that short one there, shaking off tacklers and turning that into an expansive gain downfield. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. That'll be taken in downfield by Godwin. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Back-to-back -back plays of right around 30 yards, and the field position has totally been flipped. Now, we know this offense has the potential to strike quickly, and they just bit off two huge plays on back-to-back -back snaps. So on the other side of the ball, you've got to go Band of Brothers' thought process. No one left behind, no pointing fingers, no accusations, because if you don't, those quick strikes we just saw, they become long-lasting. They run straight ahead here with White. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. 104 yards on the ground for him so far. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. They stay on the ground with White. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. It shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play, how about that tackle we just saw? Pretty nice. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And his kick is indeed good, and that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all, to me, that's a good drive. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. The Chicago offense set to get started. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. The running game continues to be a big part of their success here early in the fourth quarter. And with those types of runs, that tells you they feel very confident in their running game. They feel very strong at this stage of the contest, and they want to keep doing exactly what we saw there, running the ball down their throat. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Sometimes you get all those big guys down there in one spot, and there's just nowhere to go. And in this case, the defensive tackle used his strength and swallowed him up. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. 
This is Homer. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. Still needing 10 yards. Now it's third down. Out of the gun, Fields. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Taken down for the fifth time this game. Multiple defenders there to get him. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. Taking it about the 36. It'll be a net of only 30 here. 40 yard punt, 10 on the return. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. 23 yards on the play. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle, that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. On the give, it's White. Shreds the tackle. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucks have a first down. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. They go right back to White here on first down. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. again here with White and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line he'll wind up losing three and now it's third down you know it's become cliche but we have seen it and observed it when runners have days like what we're seeing right now they often take their offensive linemen out for stakes afterwards don't they they all go buy them dinner but after a play like that he might reduce it. Might go to the corner and just grab a hot dog or two, huh? Hey, I mean, they've still been blocking for him well in this game. They don't get one mulligan up front. Okay, so what we're saying then is we're going petite filet <laughs> instead of porterhouse. Eight How's ounce. That? Eight ounce is good. All right, just check it. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And his kick is good. And that'll make this an eight-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. to the main field goal. Here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted 
but it winds up falling incomplete. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? And the Buccaneer defense for the second straight play, flexing its muscle by forcing a loss. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Joe Tryon Shoyinka showcasing the pass rush. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing up all game long. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I've never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Second and nine. Mayfield down. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. It'll go as a gain of four. And it brings up third and five now. Now Mayfield. Throw left side taken in by Palmer. And he is going to have the box first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. Oh, they had a good chance to get off the field defensively there. If they could just wrap up, it's going to be a fourth down. But instead, they can't get him on the deck, and he allows them to pick up the first down. And again, it's Mainfield. That's again complete to Palmer. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. This duo locked in 14 yards there and a first down. As long as you go through your proper reads and progressions, the drag route can be one of those old reliable plays because usually it's good for a good chunk of yardage as we just saw there. And those guys like it, right? They can get the ball with a full head of steam. Especially against man coverage because man coverage, they're typically running away from someone and not worried about traffic coming out on the other end. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. And his throw's going to be incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Second and 10. Here's Mayfield. There's a short one taken in by Otten. A big play in this football game. Third down and one. Play fake. Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. Here we go. First and goal. Here's White. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Not a whole lot there on first and goal, and that's what you're looking for defensively. You'll certainly live with giving up just a yard or two in this situation. 
The six yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Once again, it's White. And he's able to get it down to the two yard line. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you, you want two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. Third and goal. And keep in mind, very possibly four down territory. Now Mayfield looking in zone, but it's incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Here it is, fourth and goal. They'll run for it, this is White, and he's not gonna get in. They stab him at the one. The run is turned away on fourth and goal from the two. And the Chicago defense able to come up with a goal line stand. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. Now the Bucs going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll get it with just a shade under a minute to go in the game. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven yard line. The Bucs gonna go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Here's where this crowd can really help make things difficult. It's third and three. They'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. The Bucs forced to use their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. Good coverage there holds him to just a two-yard return following a punt of 44. And that will come the offense as they take over. So Mayfield and the Bucks down 21-13, 44 seconds to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. This is where hustle and urgency come into play. I think you've got to get up there and spike it. Mayfield. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. They'll try again here, second and 10. Here's Baker. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. Down to their last chance now. This is going to have to be a heat for the end zone and just hope for a miracle. And I don't sit back with everyone back defending. I've got to have somebody rushing the quarterback. Don't make it easy for him to set up and throw the ball all the way downfield. One last shot for Mayfield here. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is 
over. But all came down to one final jump ball on the Hail Mary, but partner, the defense was ready, able to force it to be incomplete. Ball game over. Look, let's face it. Everybody wants to work the ball in closer and take a more high percentage pass to try and tie the game. But the Hail Mary, that's what they had to work with. And now they're just hoping that their jumpers can get up higher and are stronger than the defenders. Not the case in this instance. They end up losing the game. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from Tampa.